I call the Honourable Mary Ann Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't uh, often uh, rise to talk about bills such as this, but I think this is a, a particularly significant um, bill, and it's because of the human experience of some people uh, whom I know that I am moved to speak uh, on this financial markets conduct bill. Um, it certainly has been a long time in the making. Uh, it started clearly with uh, Leanne Dalzell's efforts as Minister of Commerce um, when she set up the Capital Markets Development Task Force in 2008. And I think that was uh, a significant uh, move at that time because uh, the purpose of that was to design a blueprint uh, and an action plan for the development of New Zealand's financial system. And we on this side of the House are pleased that the national government has, uh, has started to act on those recommendations, as one of my colleagues said earlier, um, acting on those, the recommendations of the task force's report uh, is uh, something of which we approve. One of those, uh, one of those recommendations was a single market uh, regulator, and I might come back to that a little later. But it seems to me that even with that work being done in 2008 and the task force being set up, there was a great deal of consultation uh, to do and a lot of people to talk to if this really were to be uh, what it now claims to be, and that is the, um, the oft-used term, a once-in-a-generation opportunity to get our uh, financial markets right. So, in uh, 2011, on October the 12th of that year, the Commerce Minister at that time, Simon Power, introduced a large bill uh, which, of some 560 pages, which progressed the work that Leanne Dalzell had done and the, um, the uh, task force had um, undertaken during those three years. And uh, since then, of course, uh, obviously Simon Powell's aims were the same as ours, and that was to uh, regulate and modernise our financial markets. But obviously um, there was more to do because uh, there was a large, um, a, a three-part uh, report uh, was recommended that it be passed by Parliament's Commerce Select Committee. Um, but what we have in front of us tonight, Mr Chairman, is an additional supplementary order paper, 220, which uh, Labor also supports, which has now taken the, thing, the bill out to uh, nearly 700 pages. However, I want to focus on some of those things that are going to be of most importance to um, the people whom I know, and I'll draw on my experience in Nelson in, in particular, Mr Chairman, uh, for this. This is a substantial bill, and before I, I begin to go into some of its effects, I, I have acknowledged Leanne Dalzell, I've acknowledged the Honourable Simon Power, and I'd like also to acknowledge the Honourable Craig Foss and the work he has done to bring this forward. As I say, it's been a long time coming, but I also want to pay a tribute to officials who have engaged in what I think is a very substantial, I understand, although I haven't been part of it, but I understand has been a very substantial consultation process. And all of that uh, is required if we're going to uh, regulate our financial <coughs> markets in a way that makes them fair, efficient and transparent. That's one of the purposes of this bill to set up uh, and regulate fair, efficient and transparent financial markets. So the bill has taken the financial markets from the ground up and rebuilt a framework that can regulate and monitor and scrutinise the operation of our financial markets. So it's been a back to basics reform and I think uh, that it is overdue, but nonetheless, I welcome it for all that. Mr Chairman, we're all familiar with stories of people, particularly retired people, 
whose savings went up in smoke when various financial houses collapsed over the last few years. And those stories without exception, Mr Chairman, Mr Chairman. The Honourable Mary Ann Street. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Those stories without ex exception have been uh, tragic. And one, uh, one of the things that I consider to be a really important benefit of this bill is the effect it's going to have on what we commonly call ma and pa retail investors, but, but ordinary regular New Zealanders who think in their retirement in particular that savings they've put away over a long period of time, over decades of a working life, and perhaps the sale of one large property and moving into a smaller property, uh, has released uh, uh, funding to them that they are now able to invest. Unscrupulous or incompetent um, finance houses have taken advantage of people who have seen um, many of their, uh, much of their savings go up in smoke. Mr. Mr. Chairman, one of the, the key changes that will make a difference to these people in the future is offer documents, uh, and which are currently known as uh, prospectuses and investment statements. But what we will have um, is a product disclosure statement. And I think the requirements of that to simplify a pro the product disclosure statement to uh, a couple of pages that set out the basics, explain the basics of what is on offer and what the risks are of investment, and then to set out a whole lot of questions um, that, uh, and, and those questions can be established in regulations, those questions can be answered in clear and concise and effective language. If people who have no particular skills in the operation of financial markets are to have any confidence that the remainder of their savings is not to go up in smoke, uh, this will be one of the devices that gives them confidence and starts to build that confidence that is required if New Zealand is going to deepen its wafer-thin uh, domestic capital that is available for, particularly for uh, new businesses that need, uh, that need investment. We have a prospect, Mr. Mr. Chairman, of uh, new uh, businesses developing, particularly in clean technology. And if they can be accompanied, our exciting inventors can, and their businesses can be accompanied by a clear, regulated product disclosure statement, then people who may wish to invest a small amount or a large amount of money will be able to do so with clarity, with certainty about what they are doing and the risks that are attaching to their investment, and they can proceed with some trust and confidence. Mr Chairman, this is the trouble now there is very little confidence and trust in financial markets. We have seen some extraordinary cases come before the courts in recent times of people whom none of us would ever have dreamed would appear in the courts on charges relating to misconduct in financial markets. And what we need desperately to do because of those events and because of the collapse of financial houses is to invest, ironically, some confidence back in the operation and, most importantly, the regulation of financial markets. So, Mr Chairman, the, the fairness, the efficiency, the transparency of financial markets is one of the two driving purposes of this bill. And uh, Labor, on, on our side of the House, we are pleased that we started it. We are pleased that this government is finishing it. And I commend it to the House. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I call the Honourable Damien O'Connor. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Mr. You're Chairman, welcome. I, I rise and I'm, I'm very happy to take a call on this 
bill and, and if you have a look at it, it might look like a doorstop but 